I'm Rachel with Adventurous Heart, and today I have a question for you. What do you do when your husband comes home and says, hey honey, I'm thinking about buying an airplane. Yes, you right. You heard me right, an airplane, the one you fly, he's already a power paraglider, so he gets the idea, but buying an airplane is a whole nother spectrum. So, of course, you might be sitting there going, an airplane, oh my gosh, you might get frustrated, you might be like, oh god, he's gonna kill himself, or you might be really excited. But for me, one word came to mind, and that word was adventure. Yes, we are embarking on an adventure to pick up Phil's airplane. We flew out here to Lompoc, California to be able to pick up his airplane. Now, as you can see here, yes, yeah, no, that one is not the plane we got. That one is way too big to be able to be filled. However, this is the airplane that he did decide to buy here in Lompoc, California. So journey along with us as we continue to be able to show you what his new airplane looks like and how he's going to be able to fly it. But first, we're going on the adventure home, starting with the box truck and going all the way from California back to Ohio. More adventures to come. All right, Phil, so we just landed in Santa Barbara on a plane, came through the clouds, over the ocean, and here we are, ready to pick up your plane. What are your thoughts? Excited, a little nervous. Probably won't fly it today. Still taking flight lessons, but I've been studying up on it, and uh, I'm excited to see it and try it on for size. Yes, I try it on because it is <laughs> yeah, so not at all like the big one you just saw yeah. <laughs> that we came in on. A little bit smaller, um, just slightly yeah. more weight than you, right? <laughs> yes, just slightly. <laughs> so right. I got to try it out. Excited to meet Fred and uh, check out the plane in person. I've never seen one of these in real life, but uh, it's, a per it's the only all-metal ultralight on the market, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, yeah, so, so I don't technically need a license to be able to fly it. Yeah. So Phil's like, oh, I don't need to take lessons. <laughs> His smarter wife, that's me, <laughs> talked him into taking a couple lessons. Yeah, so. so I got a couple, about three hours under my belt now with some stick and rudder time. So there's definitely some skills I want to brush All up right, on. Alright, well let's go meet Fred, the builder of the plane. He worked yeah. on it for how long? Six years. Perfect, let's go meet him. <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty uh, minimal. <laughs> it's minimal. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Just so you know, a little higher than the prep. Yeah, a little higher than the prep. I like how you can just stick your head off to the side. Until the wind hits you and you're like, it was probably fun. I'm a desk voice right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Elevator up, 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 up. Too close. Which way? Oh, how do I come down? Pull back, pull back. Yeah. It's pretty cool though, Phil. I think I fit in it better, so if you outgrow it, I guess it's a hand me down. <laughs> hey, there you go. When I get the zenith. There you go. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty good right here though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground? On the ground. The plane's officially yours, Philip Nagel. How do you feel? Pretty excited. Yeah. I'm not not itching the flight today. It's pretty windy, and plus I think I could benefit from a little more stick time in another <laughs> plane before yeah. I uh, do any damage to Fred's fine work. <laughs> there you go. All right, so taking the wings off so we can put it in a box truck and haul it home. Let the adventure begin. <laughs> Both wings officially off for transportation. The only thing bad about a small plane is that when you have to strap it in, this is what you're crawling through, army style. Little by little. It looks a little bit like this. Just to get out under it. So that you can strap it together. Almost ready. And that, folks, is how you put a plane in a box truck. <laughs> <laughs> Wings off, wrapped in blankets, stored under it, tied on multiple ways. Tailwheel raised just a bit to get <laughs> clearance for the wings. Barely. Barely. Look at that clearance. Like a glove. <laughs> so Philip got his first plane today, so I got him a gift. It's all packaged up in the truck. First night at the hotel in California. What do we got here? What do you think it is? Feels like a t-shirt. Yep. Probably something funny. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Alright. What does it say? <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? Warning. May spontaneously talk about airplanes. <laughs> That's probably been true for about the past six days straight. Or yeah. Maybe the past I wanted to give it to you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> With the plane loaded in the box truck, it was time to make our way back to Ohio, but not without stopping for some adventure along the way. First stop would be Santa Barbara, where we saw lots of people kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, tons of pelicans, pinnipeds, sea lions, just resting on some buoys, and of course, we decided to go jet skiing in the ocean. Super, super cool out here. Nothing but ocean. And yes, if you're wondering, it does taste a little salty, but super, super cool. We're not salty about it. We're not salty. We're happy, fun people. <laughs> we like to have fun, <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> Having fun. This jet ski can do 50, but you know, 25 with the waves, maybe. You can, a little bit of air You can time. see us uh, <laughs> going back and forth as we're jostling <laughs> on the jet ski. Ah, don't flip us. <laughs> they said it's hard to flip. We're not going to try. <laughs> just got done jet skiing and we were walking back to the truck and we saw this really really cool tree it's huge it actually reminds me of one I saw in London quite a few years back now in 07 that you could in Hyde Park where you could crawl all the way to the top and then look out so it doesn't look like I can try quite crawl too much further up on this tree but a super super cool tree love it look how big that is it's like a big snake <laughs> amazing root system see like a tight walk on it <laughs> we traveled from California to here by Tucson, Arizona at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. And believe me, when we drove in, I was in complete awe of the huge saguaros. They are amazing. They're absolutely awesome. We're going to get some close-up views for you uh, in a little bit as well. But they are as tall as some of the trees back home, 50 feet tall, and they range from 100 to 200 years old. I mean, little ones are closer to under 100, and they don't really start getting the branches off the sides to really make them look like the saguaros until they're over 100 years old. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm in complete awe. If you love cacti, you have to come out. We're driving through the Sonoran Desert. Um, we got Rachel over here, just 
chomping away at some popcorn for dinner and uh, looking at these really big cacti. She's like a kid in a candy store right now. I'm so excited. I'm even like, I noticed I was grabbing the handle of the truck and like leaning forward. I'm just eager to see more and more of the cacti. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm so excited. They're so big. They're so huge. They're so cool. I really want to hike and like just go through it even though it's 106 degrees. But yeah, kid in the candy store. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool too, but my excitement is nowhere near Rachel's, but that's okay. I got an airplane in the back, I'm pretty happy too. <laughs> we won't put a cactus in the back, that's illegal. <laughs> yeah, that's Check it out. Oh, so cool. Cacti everywhere. We made it to the east side of Saguaro National Park and the good thing about the east side is it has a paved road that we're comfortable taking the airplane on uh, while it's in the box truck. The west side just had a gravel road and we were a little concerned about that. Welcome to Carlsbad Cavern in New Mexico. So we came from Arizona where it was really, really hot. Now we're going to go where it's a lot cooler inside the cave. So we brought our jackets and we're going to be heading. First we have cave swallows that are flying around and then later they have a huge bat flight that will come out of the cave when it gets dark. So here we go into the entrance of the cave, Carlsbad Cavern. A 360 view of the cave. It echoes really loud in here. So when you're here, make sure you're nice and quiet so that you don't disturb other people. Be very peaceful. After Carlsbad Cave, it's been a lot, lot, lots of driving. So we're here in St. Louis, so we've gone from New Mexico to Texas to Oklahoma, now Missouri, and getting ready to cross that line at the Gateway Arch. Here, the St. Louis Arch, if you have a chance you're driving through on 70 uh, or 44, make sure you stop here and see the architectural wonder. From here, we're gonna continue on home through Illinois, Indiana, and then back home to Ohio, where Phil's plane will safely land its way in a hangar. That's gonna be fill up in a couple years. Yeah, give, it, give it three years. Maybe not over the arch, but over something. Backyard will do. The backyard will do. All about flight this trip. Oh, look at that. Yeah, pretty smooth. We invented a new plane simulator. All you do is tie the back of it up in your truck and go for a ride. Just kidding. This is how we are going to hold it up because there's two of us and we are going to unload the wings first. And then the plane. So we'll climb underneath here. Feel like kite spots. We mentioned we were in a cave earlier. <laughs> Doesn't this look like fun? <laughs> and then we're gonna put it in this hangar for now. Nothing too fancy, but it will work for now. It has a nice runway. Getting ready to come down the ramp. Little. Move too fast and you hear somebody like, oh! So, little small steps. It's a little windy as we're unloading it. We wouldn't fly today, but uh, seems to be the uh, normal occurrence that it's windy when we load and unload this thing. So, all kinds of fun. Success is an empty box truck. Because the plane came down the ramps. And let me tell you, when a plane is coming down ramps and you're holding all the weight on the tail, it's heavy. <laughs> but we did it. Good teamwork. That's right. Teamwork makes the dream work, or Phil's dream of flying anyway. <laughs> I'll take it. Apparently Phil gets to fly it, but I have to do all the work. He called me the chief mechanic? Aircraft mechanic? Chief aircraft mechanic. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're turning wrenches on a plane. You qualify. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, I think it's just because I'm small, so that's why he lets me do the bottom parts where it's nice and tight. Plus, you're the only mechanic I can afford. <laughs> you call me Chief? Nope, nope, nope. Uh, That's why I'm calling you Chief. 
Uh, Chief aircraft. Chief aircraft. Sometimes it's not always good to be chief of something. <laughs> hey, this is all on you. This is all on me. From taking the wings off of the plane and putting them back on once we were back in Ohio, we had an amazing time traveling from California all the way back home. And I will say that that one word that came to mind when Phil said, hey honey, can I buy a plane? We definitely followed through with that and had an amazing adventure. From stopping and seeing the saguaros in the National Park in Arizona and really just having breathtaking views of the massive size of these 100 to 200 year old cacti to going to Carlsbad Cabin where there were breathtaking views of not only the cave and the caverns inside, but also the bat flight that night where around a half million bats, and you can't even understand how many that is, but a half million bats coming out of the cave for 30 minutes, all the way to coming back, the gateway back home, the St. Louis Arch, where we even had a chance to see a skydiver go through the arch. So we definitely met the challenge of having an adventure. So I encourage you the next time that someone asks you a question that you're not really sure how to respond of, just think of one word. Think adventure. I'm Rachel Nagel with Adventurous Heart, and with a little more practice, Phil is going to be up in the air in no time.